Arson crews are investigating a fire that turned a large warehouse near downtown Lexington into this pile of rubble. Tracking big changes toward the bluegrass state. Wet and windy weather on the way. We'll pinpoint the forecast in just a moment. And a young man has died in a crash in Bath County. We'll have more on the victim ahead. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpot reporting. Jennifer has the afternoon off. We have some changes in the weather for our weekend, but first, there is a couple more nice days to enjoy for us. And here is a live look now of downtown Lexington from one of our sky cams. It is beautiful out there. We want to check in with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. And Chris, it is hard to be inside on a day like today. <laughs> it really is. I'm kind of uh, tethered, by the way, to this desk to keep me from running outside, but absolutely gorgeous conditions out. There again today, live sky cam into downtown Lexington looking a lot like what we're seeing here at the station. 76 degrees. Winds are coming at us from the southwest. That's a warm wind that is blowing out there. An occasional gust today, 15, 20 miles an hour, but most areas into the 70s, deep into the 70s. Late this afternoon, west of 65, we've been touching the 80 degree mark in a few cases. Nothing on Defender as of now. Let's broaden out the view. That high pressure that is controlling our weather has. One more day left in the tank before it gives way to this big area of low pressure across the Plain States. That's a weekend rain and windmaker for central and eastern Kentucky. And when I come back in a few minutes, we'll talk about that and a bigger storm system that we're timing into town for the middle of next week. All of a sudden, Amber, it is a very active pattern in the seven day forecast in 15 minutes. Sounds like it, Chris. Thank you. Fire crews are still working to put out hot spots after a massive fire near downtown Lexington. The fire broke out just after one this morning at a warehouse on West Third Street near Newtown Pike. Firefighters say at one point flames were shooting 45 feet in the air. WKYT's Mark Barber is near the scene with a look at the damage. It's our top story at four. The renters who used the warehouse as a storage center think it was holding about 200,000 pounds of recyclable material. Firefighters say that the flames fed off of those materials, quickly burning the building to the ground. When the smoke and the flames cleared away from the large warehouse on Newtown Pike and 4th Street, all that was left of the building was a pile of bricks. A few walls did survive the fire that started around 1 a.m. Demolition crews are taking them down so firefighters can get inside the building to throw all their resources at hot spots. According to the Property Value Administration's website, the building is owned by GL Contracting. The owner tells us he was renting part of the building to Premier Recycling. When the warehouse with their recyclables caught fire, firefighters say the flames were shooting 45 feet into the air, catching the attention and concern of many people who live nearby. This is real crazy. I mean, uh, the whole neighborhood was was uh, was scared. You know, it was a whole lot of explosion. We ain't, we ain't used to that. Firefighters aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They think the hot spots could continue to flare up until tomorrow afternoon. They say they are settling in for another long day. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. Arson investigators are still working to figure out where and how that fire started. Funeral arrangements have been made for four people killed in a fire. Lori Doppelhauer Kearney and three of her children, ages 10, 3, and 1, died when their apartment building caught fire in Maysville Monday night. Their visitation begins at 6 Saturday night at the Southern Oaks Funeral Home in Somerset. Their funeral is at 2 Sunday afternoon, also at the funeral home. They'll be buried at Camp Nelson. A neighbor also died in that fire. We'll have more on this story, including newly released 911 tapes from the fire ahead on WKYT News at 5. A driver was killed in an early morning crash. It happened just before 7 on U.S. 60 in Bath County. State police say 22-year-old Jerry Machino missed a curb, went off the road, and hit a culvert. He died at the scene. A man who lives near the scene heard the crash and says the aftermath was hard to see. It's tough. You know, he seemed like a young kid, so that made it even worse. But, uh, you know, I hate it. Uh, I hate it for him and his family. State police say it appears Machino was not wearing a seatbelt. 
We are working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hi, Sam. Good afternoon, Amber. Another school shutting its doors because of a threatening message found on a bathroom wall. Bergen independent students are out of school today after a threat was discovered yesterday. School officials made the decision to cancel classes today so Mercer County Sheriff's deputies can interview students about the threat. Police are not saying exactly what the person will be charged with. We'll have more on the situation from Mercer County ahead on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. Hard to believe, especially given this stretch of nice fall weather we're having, but flu season is upon us. Today only, you can take advantage of an event in Lexington that is free of charge. The Lexington Fayette County Health Department helping you stay healthy by giving out 1,700 free flu shots today. The clinic is open until 7 at Consolidated Baptist Church on Russell Cave Road. We'll have a live report from the flu shot clinic ahead on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton spent the morning in the hot seat before the special House committee investigating the deadly attacks on an American compound in Benghazi. Republicans insist the hearing isn't a partisan witch hunt, but Democrats aren't buying it. Diane Gallagher has a look at the morning's testimony. Hillary Clinton began her testimony with a challenge to the committee investigating the Benghazi attacks rise above politics. Let's be worthy of the trust the American people have bestowed upon us. The panel's chairman, Republican Trey Gowdy, said he shared her goal. We're going to pursue the truth in a manner worthy of the memory of the four people who lost their lives and worthy of the respect of our fellow citizens. But the committee's top Democrat wasn't buying it. So they set up this select committee with no rules, no deadline, and an unlimited budget. And they set them loose, Madam Secretary, because you're running for president. Democrats and even a couple Republicans have said that the committee's real goal is to undermine Clinton's presidential campaign. Now, for the most part, the former Secretary of State stayed away from political rhetoric, answering hours of questions about how she handled the aftermath of the attacks in Benghazi that killed four Americans, including Ambassador Christopher Stevens. This pile represents the emails that you sent or received about Libya in 2011. This pile represents the emails you sent or received from early 2012 until the day of the attack. And I can only conclude by your own records that there was a lack of interest in Libya in 2012. I did not conduct most of the business that I did on behalf of uh, our country on email. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher reporting. Congressman Paul Ryan seems all but assured of becoming the next House Speaker. After a closed door vote late yesterday, a group of hardline conservatives are now backing Ryan's bid for the House's top job. In a statement, Ryan said the vote from the House Freedom Caucus was, quote, a positive step toward a unified Republican team. The group pushed current Speaker John Boehner to announce his resignation. Soda sales are losing their fizz in the U.S. Details ahead in WKYT Money Watch. And you can now watch YouTube without any interruption from advertisements, but it's going to cost you. That's coming up on WKYT News at 4.